Hey guys, welcome to part two of decoding digital signals with FLDG on your computer. So in the first part, um, we talked about you know FLDG, how to get it on the web, and how to install the software. But then you'll need to plug in a radio and also tweak to make sure that everything works right and how to know if it works right or not. First of all, you will need a audio cable to hook up your computer to the radio. And an audio cable is something like this. This is an example of a small audio cable. So this is a regular cable with uh, basically these are, you know, the same type of plugs that you'll get in an MP3 player or a Walkman or, you know, a small radio. They're, um, I believe, one eight of an inch uh, plugs. Now there are two types. Here is a mono type. This is the one I'm using, which is mono. So there's only one little black line on it. A stereo plug has two black lines because it has one more line for the stereo. Now both work in most cases. So if you don't see a mono one, uh, take the stereo one. And um, if you don't have a stereo one and you see only a mono one, take the mono one. It's going to work anyway. Um, I've never seen a case where it didn't work even with a stereo plug. Uh, so that's the first thing that you'll need to get. Now where do you get this type of cable? Uh, well this uh, I bought at the local electronics surplus store that's not very far from here. Um, typically I would say that probably in the United States Radio Shack should have some type of cable like this which is at each end uh, a Walkman style plug so you really need to have those at each end um, or else eBay is uh, a, probably a great place to get these cables and uh, maybe electronic stores online they're not very difficult to um, to get but uh, you need to you know go to the right store to get them once you've got your cable you have to hook it up to the radio now one on my ICOM, uh, you know, I've got an output right here. I've got, if I just zoom in here, I've got right there, which is a um, basically a output um, record out that it's called, and that's what I'm using actually, the record out of my ICOM. On some other radios, uh, you might need to use the um, you know, output of for the earphones. Uh, if you have a portable receiver, because most of you guys will not have such a receiver, but they'll, you'll have uh, probably a portable receiver. Well, two types of receivers. For example, here on my Grundig G5, there's a line out, which is great for that. So if you have something called line out on your radio, you're in business. This is cool. This also means that you can actually plug it in and listen to the radio at the same time. Uh, the Grundig G5 has a line out. Uh, if you have a Degen DE1103, it has a line out on the right side also, which is pretty cool. So that's also very, very nice. Um, if you have something like a Texan PL600 or my uh, Sanji and ATS505, no line outs are possible, so you'll use the same plug that you use for the headphones and uh, here on my Sanjin ETS also uh, it doesn't have a line out so you'll use the uh, whoops, sorry, the headphone here which is right here at the bottom with the little sign for headphones so uh, this is how you'll hook up now you might say okay but if I hook up through the headphones I don't hear any sound and that's one thing that uh, happens if you don't have a line out you'll have to listen to the sound through your computer at that time so how do you do that let me just plug in one of my receivers so I'll plug in the uh, ATS, engine ATS um, and we'll uh, you know just leave it at some station here um, WWV So what I'll do is, of course, I'll hook up 
my cable, so that little precious cable that I told you you need, you'll of course hook it up in the headphone jack of your radio. And the second part, the other part, will go on your computer's input of your sound card. Now, if you use a laptop, the inputs are usually either on the sides or on the front edge of your laptop. So take a look, you'll see there's usually two spots. One is for the headphones and one is for the input. So you just have to hook it up to the right place. How do you know if it works or not? That's the second question. Uh, well, the best thing you can do is look at FLDG's waterfall here. Let me demonstrate that I'll unplug. So here's the unplug. And look at the color of. Usually, when you plug it in, the waterfall is either black or very deep blue, meaning there's almost no sounds. If you are in the right spot for plugging in into your computer, so if you put it in the right input. What you'll need to check for is when you plug in your radio, the static should actually show up on your waterfall as a yellow or if the volume's too high even red spikes and you see that there's yellow now going down the waterfall. That means that it is getting sound from my receiver. So that's a good thing. Now if you don't get any of those, first of all, switch your input. Maybe you're in the uh, headphones output instead of the input for the microphone of your sound card in your computer. And uh, if you have a uh, laptop, like I said, it's either on the edge or on the front most of the time. If you have a desktop computer, it might be color coded. Very often the microphone input is pink. So if you see a pink input, or a pink uh, little hole, that is probably your microphone. If you don't see anything, go in your menu in FLDG. On the upper right corner, if you go into, uh, uh, left corner, sorry, uh, go into configure, you'll see that you have something called sound card. You click there and make sure that in sound card, you have the right setting. So the capture, first of all, you need to enable port audio with a little check mark if it's not already there and make sure that the capture, Microsoft, here I have Microsoft Realtek High Definition. If you click here, you might have more than one device. If one doesn't work, try the other one until you get your waterfall with colors that shows you that there's sound. Now, another problem that will, uh, of course, be there in people that use the headphone jack is the fact that you have no more sound on your radio. So how can you tune around if you don't have any sound? That's another little thing that you'll need to do and that's going to happen if you're using Windows. Right there in the bottom right you have always have that little um, speaker here that shows you the volume control. If you right click on that you'll have recording devices. Click on recording devices and in the recording devices you'll have of course this little window show up that shows you microphone. Uh, if you click, double click on it, it's going to open another window and here you'll have listen in that little window. You can click listen and click apply And as you see here, now I have the sound from the radio and the computer. So it's, it gives me the possibility to listen to what I'm actually hearing here. So for example, if I'm listening to an AM station, let's say CJD. Here we go. So this is through the computer. So it's very important that you do that if you don't have a line out 
because you won't be able to hear what you're um, you know tuning on your radio so that's one thing you have to check for so uh, make sure that that's okay of course if you have a line out don't touch that you don't need to listen through your computer uh, because you'll hear it through the radio so an, an example that I show you if, if I uh, tune my Turn on my uh, DJ in here. Well, you know, we continue to work on that. I think Curtis, so one, the most important thing we can do is take our eyes off the If I use the line out, I still have sound on the radio. I think, um, just and my waterfall shows that something's actually showing here. So you get all these lines to show that there's some sound. So take a look, have the right cable, um, plug in your computer, play with the settings that I showed you. Uh, remember, right click on your little speaker if you don't have the sound. And you know, use the configure menu on the upper left of FLDG, go into sound card, make sure your inputs are okay. That's very important. Uh, one last thing, and um, the problem is noise. A computer generates a tremendous amount of electrical noise, and if you use a desktop receiver like my ICOM, it's not much of a problem because the ICOM computer has a computer a radio has its own filtering. So it means that in the radio, the filters remove most of the noise, but on the most uh, portable receivers that you'll want to listen to unfortunately that doesn't happen so if you have a laptop the best thing you can do when you're uh, tuning the bands will be to unplug the laptop's power supply it's gonna make a tremendous difference and I'm gonna show you an example here here's um, let's take the Dijon D1103 here Let's put it onto a shortwave frequency with a volume a little higher. So here I've got 5040 tune here. If I plug in my computer, so I'm just going to plug in, and I want to plug in now to the radio, listen to the difference in noise. much higher but if I do the same and I'll plug my power supply the noise is actually much lower now so it gives you an idea that using your laptop without its power supply just on the battery is probably the best thing you can do on a laptop on a desktop you cannot do that unfortunately so uh, two things you can try if you have too much noise is first of all buy a good quality cable a lot of these cables are very cheap and what you need is one that has a good shield on it and actually the one I have I use all the time which is this one it's one of the best for that uh, but unfortunately this one came with a cartridge for the Commodore 64 way back in the 80s it's the same wire that I'm using and it was well shielded because a Commodore computer would actually send too much noise on the uh, radio. So this one is really well shielded. And another thing you can buy is what we call a toroid core. These are little cores of um, magnetic or um, you know like steel. And what you'll want to do is take the wire and make loops inside the coil so that it actually uh, limits the amount of noise that comes from the computer to the radio. So these are little things you can try for. Uh, when you start doing digital mode decoding, your biggest enemy will be computer noise crawling in your um, radio. And especially if you hear, uh, or you use, sorry, a portable receiver. Second thing also, um, or third thing, sorry, is put your radio, you know, take that wire that you plug in your computer 
and extend it as long as it can and bring your radio as far away of the computer as, uh, as possible because another enemy will be of course your computer will generate a lot of noise so if you put the radio far away from the computer uh, you know extend that little cable as much as possible you'll have less computer noise also going in the receiver so this is part two hope it's not too complicated uh, now you know how to hook up your computer and your radio together you know how to uh, hook up a portable receiver and uh, hopefully you got the cable you got everything right you've noticed that in the waterfall it works when you plug in your audio of your radio we're going to move on to part three which will be decoding your first signal and that will be um, Morse code in part three. So hope you enjoyed this series, 73.